Bassmaster Classic in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. I grew up about 45 minutes south of Pine Bluff, and they had the Bassmaster Classic there. You know, we attended the last day, and Rick Clun set the all-time record for most pounds caught in the Classic on the Arkansas River, and that's my home body of water. My father and I, we fished the Arkansas River a lot then, even before I went to that tournament way in Clun won 40 or $45,000, and, and I knew at that point, you know, as a 10-year-old little boy, that I was like, that's what I want to do. He got paid to go fishing. And I'm like, I, did, I, I love to fish more than anything else in the world. And, and that was the first time that it hit me that people got paid to do that. So uh, I chased that dream down and here I am. Do I need to be mic'd or? Yeah, I got one. I'll, I'll throw it on you here okay. when we get in the boat. I have this one on top, so everything you said earlier I have. Oh, okay. you know. Well, good. <laughs> we're in uh, Canada going by the way the temperature feels. No, we're in, we're at Lake Fork getting ready to start. This is the first day of practice for our Lake Fork Elite Series event. It's a brisk 40 degrees this morning in the middle of April, and it looks like we're gonna have this pretty much all week, so it's not real good. Not to say that the tournament won't be real good, but it's just weather-wise right now, it's not what you want in April. is roughly 29,000 acres. It was built as a bass fishery. I mean, the number one thing with Lake Fork, it was built as a trophy lake bass fishery. You were not allowed to keep, you know, basically tournament grade fish. This event being unique in that the fish are weighed in the boat and released. You catch a fish over 24 inches, you can bring that fish to the weigh-in because that's actually above the slot. And then you're allowed by law to keep one fish over the slot. So every day you can keep your biggest fish and bring it into the weigh-in and the rest will be released. But yeah, this is a trophy fishery and we're gonna see some trophy fish this week. We, the one thing for sure that I do know no, they got to be big, you know. They got to be nice fish. But the other thing to do, like on a situation like we're in, is to, if you, if you know, I mean, it's different if I can see them, but is to tell what are they just about through spawning, or you know, are, all the, are they fat blown up? You know, I have no idea what stage these fish are in or whatever. But like, if you in an area like this, if you get on them, it doesn't matter. I don't have any eye. You know what I mean? It's not like there's a place for him to get out there deep. This is all just a big old flat. Oh, I missed him. Dang, pretty nice fish. You know, he hit that thing hard. I don't know, uh, and I hesitated when he got it. I didn't uh, swing on him, I thought he had it. Of course, I swung a little hard, because I like to. What's up? You know why he was blowing, don't he? Mad, he going to work. But I'm working too. I just cho chose a different profession from him. I mean, my grandparents, on both sides, on my mother and on my father's side, were fishermen, and I went fishing a lot. And I fished for everything growing up. Now, I, now bass fishing was definitely, was my favorite, but I just loved to fish. We catfish, run trot lines. You know, I grew up frog gigging, I mean. But I loved the bass fish, that was my passion. Now this looks like something you'd use for bait at Lake Fork. Ooh, something's out of hold to him. Probably the bass we're looking for. <laughs> See, this is my boat now. <laughs> that, that was my boat before King the Bat. It's already working. <laughs> Basically this morning I'm not in a big hurry to get out there because I don't want to get out there till I can see visually. Then I'm tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'll cast some just because I like to cast, but I'm basically just go down the bank on the trolling motor and mark every one that looks good. There's a little shad spawn right there on the end of that tree. This boat over here is watching. I was gonna fish down through. Look at, he's gonna come all the way over to me. I knew he was fixing to do that. 
Look, Shad, we're definitely spawning right there. No, so the deal is, you know, like I, like early on, I, we would go to lakes that uh, where they where they spawn, but I didn't really understand that. Now I understood the bass spawn from an early age, but my father was an avid bass fisherman. But that whole this whole shad spawn deal was something I really really learned since I've been fishing professionally, you know. And then I just learned how big a deal it was all over the country. Well, I'm like growing up, I didn't necessarily even look for it, if that makes sense. If I just happened up on a place and it was happening, no good, you know what I mean. But I didn't know to target it. Now I know that, you know, 15 minutes on the right place when that's going on and <laughs> you've made your whole day, <laughs> you know, when it's right. I'm sure it's a giant after I said the hook, it's not. If I'd have thought it was, I wouldn't have said the hook. <laughs> it's about what I thought, about what I figured it is, a tiny buck bass. But I just wanted to see what one was like fishing. Orange worm is the deal. I probably only fished by 50 to get that one to bite. It'll be by far the biggest weight of any Elite Series event of this season, you know, for sure. So, uh, don't know, I don't know what that number is. I just know it's much bigger than any place else will go this year. It's gonna be a lot of weights and hooks this week. It's gonna be a big weight, big week for weights and hooks. Plastics. Yeah, I don't think. A spinnerbait gonna make a show in this week. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. In a way, I kind of like that because it's gonna be simple. It's gonna be real simple. You know what I'm gonna do is like, gonna be real simple. It's not complicated, so that always helps. Makes you a little more efficient. I mean, you know, fishing a place like this is like going to place hunting trophy deer. I mean, that's fishing here overall is relatively challenging, and one of the reasons for that is because it does get a lot of fishing pressure, but it's still produces lots of 10 pounders and a lot of, you know, dreams. It's basically a catch and release event we're fishing here this week, so I like that. You know, you catch that fish, you turn it back right where it came from, so probably a lot less stress on the fish by doing that. And then I don't have to run them live wells and fool with it. So it makes it my job a little easier. But, uh, but yeah, it is, it's, it's a great lake, I mean, it's, if you like to run over stumps, I mean, it is a stump hole now. If I had a dollar for every uh, stump I've ran over this week, I probably wouldn't even need to fish in this tournament. You know, my season started off really well. It's been really lackluster the last couple of events. I'm really looking for this event to get me back on the track that I started the year on. I don't really know what happened. I kind of lost my momentum in the last two events. You know, some of it were just some things happened that I didn't have any control over, but I like to be in the right frame of mind and this is the place that can do that for me and, and get me back on the route that I want to travel. And uh, we are excited to get things under. You ready to see some fish? Well, maybe a fish? And talk to the guys about how they caught them? All right, let's get rolling. Yeah, I'm okay, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, this place yesterday was crazy. It's kind of it's uh, kind of confusing what happened. I'm sure a lot of guys will tell you the same thing. I, like yesterday, I saw some sights that it's the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. Like giants everywhere, and today, I don't know, you know, it was cold today and windy, and last night didn't get as cold as the night before, but it's like the ground sucked them up. I don't know what happened, but I'll, uh, you know, I'm glad to have what I had, just kind of survive the day, but this, this place is, will show out before the week's over, no doubt. Fishing's always a great mystery, though. Yes, it is. That's what, keep, that's what keeps us going. Thank y'all. Good luck tomorrow, Greg. It's kind of weird. I, I just, you know, tomorrow I'll just go fish, and I, I won't be locked into anything. I need 25 pounds or 30. You know, they're out there. So tomorrow I'll just, you know, just do some fishing. 
see what happens. So I'm looking for that day when I drink beer to celebrate, not when I drink beer to help my feelings. <laughs> I knew a couple guys that I grew up with that tried this and it, they were probably capable as fishermen, but they were not capable of doing the life that you have to lead to do this. It's, this is a hard, this hard road. You know, guys that do this, they're a different breed in that, you know, there's just a lot of sacrifices that you gotta make. But the biggest thing I could tell anyone who wants to do this, time on the water, nothing beats that. You go to the lake every time you can go. I don't care what lake it is, what river it is, whatever. You spend as much time possible on the water. Yeah, started off great morning, and <laughs> it's been terrible the rest of the day. Fix and get this rat killing over with. Just got to where I couldn't catch them. I don't know. I saw plenty, some big ones. They were weird. I've been fishing for bedding fish the whole time, just because it's fun, and you never know the next hole's got a 10 or 12 pounder in it here. So it is a it is a fun place to fish, but it is a very challenging fishery. I hope you find that 10 pounder in the morning. Good luck. And I did get overconfident, and I'm bad to do that because I'm a swinger, you know what I mean? Like, after catching those first few this morning and just picking me off some two and a half pounders, you know, I'm looking for 25 pounds. I won't, uh, I just, I gotta quit doing that. I'm bad to do that, you know, because I ain't scared. But that's stupid. <laughs> Everywhere I went when I got back down the lake, there were two or three boats and it, you know, I got on a bad rotation. I couldn't get around and uh, once you leave, you can't, you know, it is a Saturday on Lake Fork and I'd go in a deal and there'd be three locals in the back and then you go in the next deal and there's one of our guys and it's hard to move around, you know, and I didn't have a spot specific deal, you know, because I decided to bed fish this week and which was the wrong thing to do. but. You know, it's kind of that deal, I always say this, you never quit learning doing this, and even me, as much as I've done it. So I've been here enough to know now that regardless of what time of the year is, you better have fish on a point here. I just went all in on the sight fish, and you, you can't, you know, every now and then you get lucky and you can be one dimensional. And uh, I tried to be one dimensional in it, you know. I mean, I still got some points, made some money, and uh, on to the next one, but I just, I learned a lot. I survived. You know, I've been kind of on a downward spiral the last couple tournaments, and uh, you know, I had a big fish come off the last one. I maybe even could even would have completely changed the outcome of that event. We don't even know how well I could have done with that one bite, and uh, so it, it, it feels good to kind of get on the upside again. And this is done as of right now. When I get back in this boat and go put this boat on the trailer, this tournament is done. You know. tournaments is 30% of my career, the majority of it is doing fishing shows, whether it's the Bass Pros television show, Pro Team Journal, or Zona show. And here's the beautiful thing, like getting ready for a show is a lot like fishing a tournament. Like I take it that serious. In fact, actually, a fishing show has a way bigger entry fee <laughs> than a tournament. And you can lose, you can lose that entry fee just as easily. Bud, what's going on? You with the man? You with the man today? Good luck today, Kyle. Having a time, just having a time. So as crazy 
as crazy as the schedule's been the last, gosh, it's only been like 50 days. Cameraman Brandon's the one that came to the house back at the end of February. But now this is the time of year that I kind of, I start to transition into tape and zona shows where we kind of live on the water, which does not suck. It's, it's good. What I'll do for, especially like one with this, we have, we're, we're, we're gonna get aggressive. We're gonna try to knock out three, potentially three pro team journals, two solo ones tomorrow and Thursday, and then a special guest maybe arriving on Friday, an old friend from Kalamazoo I hadn't fished with, oh, in like 10 years. Gosh, we used to a lot. Life got in the way of that. Whenever you tape, tape a show, whether it's a Zona show, a, a Bass Pros TV show, a pro team journal, I mean, I take these serious. Like I said, you know, when we were launching the boat, th these are my tournaments. Like, if you go out and don't catch crap, what airs is crap, right? So what we'll do is we'll just kind of go get a, a, a vibe. I'm just trying to find massive, massive groups of them. Get some bites because the, the females are, they ain't far. They're, they're, they're real close. I'm in the big leagues, but they don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston, hey, feeling like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh, send it too quickly. I'm making his dog, like I'm in the big leagues. Told him that I gotta go, dog. I'm riding the road, y'all. I think that I'm back in my bag now. So I need that go, y'all. Got hits when he throw in the fastball. Just too quick for it, peeling off at the whip orange. Seen it after this. Ooh, I'm starting to see. Ooh. Naughty. Stabbing on ten two. Too much that I've been through. So I put it all in that rear view. That's a good one. money in a black whip. Got old problems with the friends new. Yeah, I'm in the big leagues. Really big one. Really big one. This is the kind we want for the show. Oh. 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 He's got one with him. Dude, this is a cod. Looks like they're home. Ooh. That's a big one, All right? That, that is a tub of goo right there. Yes, sir. I, I take this so serious. I, I want a protein journal to, I, I want to knock their ever-loving lights out. We gotta just leave. It's a big one. What I always wanted from a fishing show, at least that I've done, number one, that it's real. You go out in the worst weather or you go out in the best weather possible. Because I want somebody that's watching it to go, yep, I gotta go out in that stuff. Or, or to watch it and go, dang it. I want to do that, that right there. But the other side, from a selfish standpoint, I want to put myself and the crew in the best possible conditions to execute. To execute yeah. to when we all get off the water, you give a high five and you go, nailed it, nailed it. Because a lot of times, when you're producing a fishing show, you get off the water and you're like, see you tomorrow. Let's try that again. Hi. Let's do more of that, right? We're ready for Protein Journal. We are. It's gonna be a fun week. I took one of the camera guys out, Brandon, from Strike King and Lose, and I said, hey, we're going to try to execute three Protein Journals in three days. So we made the transition to Lake St. Clair, here's what's amazing. I went out and we're doing a little bit of Kings of Bass stuff, but we're preparing for Protein Journal the next day. And I went to a few areas where I had clocked them two or three weeks ago and it starts. But what was amazing was a couple big ones, you know, look, enough where we can knock some shows out. And I said, there is a collision coming. You always hear this. When that first giant wave of smallmouth comes shallow, 
Number one, they come in numbers, and number two, they are not the sharpest tools in the shed. These are gonna be some of the best pro team journals I've ever been a part of with striking and lose. One of the best parts about doing this, doesn't matter if I'm doing pro team journal or Kings of Bass or Zona show, is when you come out of these canals on the Great Lakes, whether you're on St. Clair, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, when you come out and you look at that playing field, it is like one of the most, like I used to get so intimidated growing up and you come, come out of this breaker wall and you're like, oh, where do I start? You know, you always hear that cliche, you're waiting for a wave. That actually happens here, like this time of year, where it gets around 50 to 55 degrees to where at somewhere through the day, every single folder is gonna have them. Are you kidding me? I don't know what to do with myself. Look at that. Look at them. That's how you start Pro Team Journal right there. 70%, 70% of, of my career is spent on the water. It is absolutely on the water. And this time of year, when April 20th hits, whatever time I don't have to cover the Bassmaster Elite Series, the rest of the time, this is my deer hunting uh, of bass season, if that makes sense. Like all of you deer hunters, you know, third week of October to the third week of November, that's your time to go deer hunting right? That third week of April to the third week of May, that is your time where magic can happen, smallmouth fishing. Well, what's amazing throughout the last 20 years is man, I just always want to go out and have fun, misbehave, and I still do that in my career. But really, as the years have gone on, I want everybody that watches the content, no matter who it's with, is, wow, that looks fun, that looks awesome, but to learn something. I, I try to have a nugget here and a nugget there to where somebody can come up to me and go, hey dude, I watched this, or I watched this, or I watched this, and I went out and I pounded them. That is why I do this. I don't look at myself as an instructor or a teacher, but I got a lot of years doing this now. I, I got decades and decades and decades. It's the best. Like I, I've had a few people look at me and say, you're the reason I got into bass fishing. And look, to this day, I get so jacked up, tweaked out of my gourd to launch my boat. But most of all, when somebody walks up and says that to me, Man, I got into bass fishing because of you. <laughs> you know, I've been watching you since I was five. Easy, cowboy, easy. That is the ultimate compliment because I know what bass fishing's done to me in my life. And it's, it has saved me and, and given me a, a, a wonderful career for so many years. I, I take a, a crazy, crazy amount of pride in hopefully doing it right. Hey. I'll, I, I will absolutely live what, by what I'm gonna say. Some shows are gonna suck. Some shows, we are going to absolutely pile drive them. But damn, it is awesome. It is absolutely awesome when it all comes together. Nothing better, nothing. Fishing is so good. I called Kevin Van Dam and some of the folks at Strike King. Kevin and I have not taped in many years. We don't have the same schedule anymore, which sucks. It does. You know, we used to tape all the time. I hate to say it. Our taping was just a reason for him and I to, to go bass fishing together. And I, I texted him 48 hours ago and I'm like, you might want to get that rear end up here. And, and look, Kevin, Kevin is like me, he is a nutbag. 
about catching smallmouth, but I, I had not fished with, with Kevin in about four or five years. It's hard for me to put into perspective, even when I'm with him now, and when he was winning Angler of the Year Classic, Angler of the Year Classic, which don't get me wrong, I still think he has one of those in his future. Oh, I said that, didn't I? I do, I do. I still think you may see him one day win another classic. I believe that. People could look at this and go, dude, you're nuts. He doesn't even fish fast faster. <laughs> but I believe that. But anytime, anytime you can, you can get together with an old friend, granted it's, you know, Van Dam, you're gonna have a good time and you know that, it, uh, I, I know St. Clair pretty well and I know he knows quite a few magic rocks out there. We are gonna kick their teeth in. <laughs> There's no doubt. Ah, I've taped so many shows with Kevin. Like I've taped so many shows. And what's funny is I feel like I'm the only person that picks on Kevin because I can pick on Kevin. And I, and I dig at him a little bit, you know? It's all in, all in good fun. He can take it. He gives it back. He gives it back. That's a good one. That's a big one. Nice one. That's a good one. Dude, they are swimming everywhere right here. <laughs> That's got to be a better one there. That's got to be a better one. Look at that. I mean, not a mark, not fanning, not doing anything yet. They're just, every fish in the lake that lives out in the middle is coming up shallow now for the spawning process. And I just happened to be here for it. <laughs> All kind of worked out, didn't yeah. it? It's hard to put in the words and in the perspective, but things, literally, you know, I've, I've spent my life since I was five years old chasing smallmouth, but I've seen things taping with the Pro Team Journal crew in the last three days that I've not seen in my life, in my lifetime. And to be able to, be able to pass that on to a viewer in, 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 in just a small way, just a small way of what we experienced and what we did to where they can go to that same lake, throw that same bait, whether it, you know, it's, it's a rage swimmer or it's a, a half shell or it's a coffee tube, whatever it might be. But for them to go, man, next May, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna launch there and I'm gonna go do that with the potential of catching a hundred giant bass, there's nothing better. That's when I know some way, shape or form I did my job.